I think that when you, when it comes to soloing, our, what we can predict, we, we get very comfortable with. And that's, that's a powerful thing if you learn how to harness that in your soloing. For example, um, there's this great trumpet player, Clay Jenkins, I played with for a while when he was in New Zealand. We did a bunch of concerts and Clay's an amazing musician. And Clay would have this thing where he'd play the trumpet and he would lead a line that would lead your ear up to the high point of this this phrase and whenever you thought he was gonna play that note he wouldn't he just hold back for like a bar and then he would give it to you and it was way more powerful than if he had have played it when you thought it was coming I'll show you what I mean if I take a simple thing like uh, I'm gonna play the G major scale and I'm gonna play it in thirds what's called in thirds so. now if I go We can hear where it's going, don't we? I don't actually need to play it, but so if I hold back on that note, it's better than going because I've kind of suspended the sense, given it, given it a sense of suspension, and that's a lot more exciting than giving it to you when you when you expect it you're, you're, the predictability isn't the, isn't quite the same and lots of music has that you know so you can delay that resolution for, for effect I think that's kind of what we're leading tones leading phrases is, is a powerful thing See, every time I'm holding back on those notes, you're, you're anticipating it, and then they have more effect than they would have had it um, before. Also, too, I mean, there's another way of kind of looking at leading tones, too, as a way to kind of lead into chords and lead into that, into notes and so on like that. I'm kind of, that's not what I'm meaning by leading tones right now, just to be clear. A lot of people, when they play, when they solo, they just play loud all the time. They don't really... They don't really think about shaping what they're doing, or they just, you know, they're playing. It just sounds like garbage to me. That's not music. So for me, it's like that one of the big things is that I want to hear dynamics and phrases. So for example. So you can hear out of that, I'm kind of shaping my ideas, and it's, it's how we speak. I, I, you know, if you imagine someone who speaks in monotones, there's nothing wrong with that, but, you know, someone who goes, Hi, my name is Nick, and I play the guitar. It's boring, isn't it? You switch off, don't you? And guitar is like that. You know, I want it, I want it to speak. <laughs> So, so dynamics within phrases, there's also dynamics as a bigger picture as well. And it's an important thing to consider that if you're soloing and you start off really, really big, where can you go? Downwards, that's it. If you start off kind of softer and more uh, delicate, then you've got some room to grow your solo and it can build up and build up to a climax and then come back down. And that classic bell shape is a, is a common device used by people when soloing. Um, why? Because it just works, right? So that's one way you can kind of look at look at dynamics as like a bigger picture thing. And for me, that's kind of the key to playing ballads really, really well, is thinking about the shape and thinking larger picture. What's the melody of the song? So, you know, if maybe if you're playing a Jimi Hendrix tune... <laughs> Thank you. 
you know, that, that kind of thing. You could use that as a melody. <laughs> So there I just took the same rhythmic structure and kind of general shape and I made my own kind of notes out of it and that could go anywhere. So on and so on, right? So that's taking the the rhythmic sh rhythmic structure and putting new notes to it. Well, you can do the same thing, you can take the same notes but put a different rhythmic structure to it. You get something quite different. So you can see I've taken the same notes of that Jimi Hendrix thing and I've kind of uh, rhythmically changed it to create something new and again it's still related to the melody so your solo is going to sound like it's related it's not just some departure. Okay, so I had someone send me a message too saying that um, he considers fills and hooks to be really important, and I do too. Um, there, that's kind of a dying art these days um, of, of playing fills. Now, what do I mean by fills? I mean the kind of around the melody type parts. Um, so say you have a, a, a melody for a song, uh, a simple one like Summertime, for example. Well, that's where you could play the fills. Now the key to playing good fills is not stepping on the melody. Um, you you want to be able to try and find a way to weave in there. Um, I find that personally, for me, playing fills is about playing something that's not happened in the melody. Otherwise it's just a reiteration of it. For example, if, I, if the melody goes and I go It's too close to the melody that it kind of just sounds like I've I've cluttered it. Um, the other thing too is further to that is is I find with fills keep them really really simple and don't feel you have to play all the time. You know maybe if there's four gaps only play three of them let one just kind of slide by. Um, John Schofield's a real master of that of kind of picking his moments of when to kind of play those sort of fills and sometimes you'll play them with chords. They don't always have to be melodies. Maybe, you know, the melody is da do da do da 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 and he might go something like da do da da do da da You know, and you could use some chords like that to kind of play a fill. You're still making sure that the top note of your chord is creating a melody, and that's the purpose, but that, that can be a really effective way of playing fills as well. You know, again, not all the time. Uh, the way this was described to me was, think about it like cooking a steak. You cook your steak and you put a little bit of salt and pepper on it maybe, and if you put too much pepper, you've wrecked it. There's no taking it back, and it's the same thing with this. Okay, so I'll leave you with one more thing that, that I would consider when working on your soloing and that would be having some kind of melodic hook or some kind of um, some kind of theme to your solo for example if I go then I'll go back to that da, 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 da. that might be my theme so therefore See there I had a theme and it was one that I repeated quite a bit and I sort of milked it for all it's worth. I think that's really important because it kind of ties your solo together. And again that's a point I think people forget about that the solos that most people consider the great ones are the ones that sort of have a really nice compositional nature to them. They have a theme or a melodic idea like that. They have a certain kind of rhythmic phrasing 
they have dynamics, they have all of these things I've talked about. So anyway, I hope that's been useful. Um, I really see myself as a soloist, but also a soloist who is a rhythm player. Um, I'm primarily thinking about rhythm when I solo, uh, and when I, of course when I play rhythm guitar I do, I, I'm really thinking about rhythm, but when I solo I'm no less thinking about rhythm. Um, I love soloing, it's one of my favourite things to do, especially when it really feels like it's happening and the band's connecting. Um, for me, I like to really connect in with the drummer and what they're doing and the bass player. Um, if they're just kind of playing a groove and not really reacting to what I'm doing, then it's, to me the solo is not going to happen but if they're kind of reacting and the re reactions can be sometimes very subtle but if they're reacting to what I'm doing and listening and going with with the music where I'm taking it then we can go some places and it can be really exciting and, and that's where music really happens for me anyway thanks for watching if you've liked this subscribe to my channel uh, I'm going to do some more it's been a while since I've done a video um, a lesson video but I'll do some more look me up on Facebook Instagram Twitter all that kind of stuff uh, I'm going to put more effort into Twitter soon. I haven't really done much with that soon for a while, but I will. And there's some diagrams of stuff on my Facebook page, Nick Granville Music. Uh, I've got albums available. Check those out if you want to listen to some of this. And if you've got any comments, let me know. Okay, cheers. Bye.